Hi, I'm Mark Daler. Uh, let me take you through an import workflow for Adobe Lightroom. I'll also be using a Lexar Professional Workflow Hub. Uh, the hub has four bays that you can either put in card readers or SSD drives. Some photographers will um, try and get um, uh, data off uh, multiple cards, three or four cards, at the same time using this hub. I'll be using it in a slightly different configuration. I've just got one of the bays filled with an SD card reader. I've got two of the other bays filled with 512 gigabyte SSD drives. Um, and that's because I don't want um, these uh, large files that I'm importing coming onto my MacBook Air. I want them going onto two separate hard drives. Same files to two drives, and one uh, drive will act as, a, as the backup. Okay, so I particularly like this hub because it's a, it's a Thunderbolt uh, drive as well as a USB 3. And uh, because it's a Thunderbolt and with two ports on the back, I can actually connect um, an external display, a cinema display, uh, to the back of this hub and then uh, connect uh, the hub itself to my MacBook Air, which only has a single Thunderbolt port. Okay, so let's uh, come over to the import uh, button here. And I'll just uh, take you through this uh, workflow. Now let's um, put in the card. Okay, and maybe I should have done that uh, first. Okay, so the card will pop up uh, soon, uh, and we should see that device here uh, on the left-hand side. Okay, the uh, I've named the card, and uh, you can see a little portrait shoot that I've been working on. So let's just follow the arrows. We're coming from the card. If I want to start working on the images in the um, in the shortest amount of time possible, I'll choose copy rather than copy as DNG. I like the DNG file format, but I'd have to be patient for a few more minutes while it builds those DNGs in the background. So I'm just going to choose copy if I want to work on these files straight away. I can always copy to DNG later. And we're coming over and we're uh, copying the files um, to one of my 512 gigabyte SSD drives in the workflow hub. And I've chosen that by just coming to other destination and choosing my 2015 catalog. I can create a new folder here. I've already done one. I've clicked on the 2015 here. And then I'll just hit choose. Okay, file handling. Okay, um, we're not going to build smart previews uh, now, but when I've um, uh, chosen my best images, I will build smart previews from uh, those rated images. That means that I can disconnect um, this uh, Thunderbolt hub and I'll still be able to carry on editing my favorite images offline. Okay, don't import suspected duplicates is checked. That's because if I've forgotten to reformat my memory card, I don't want to re-import um, the first shoot uh, a second time. I've also got this uh, option checked, which is make a second copy to. Now this will be the second uh, 512 gigabyte SSD drive in the um, in the hub, uh, the Lexar hub here. And I've chosen that to, again just by coming up to choose folder. I'm choosing my backup drive and a name folder on that backup drive. And let's hit uh, choose there. Okay, now um, we're going to um, uh, go into file renaming. And uh, I'm going to choose a custom name and uh, the original file number. Um, your, your camera will eventually um, cycle through its frame count and start back at zero. So it's worth having a custom name coming in here. You can uh, name the shoot or maybe um, I'm just going to give it the camera name this time around, A7R2. And uh, then we're going to apply during import. This is where we put our keywords so we can find these images later. So I'll just put Tegan, then comma, and uh, Prince's uh, Pier. Okay, and uh, you can see I've already entered that one in. So uh, we can just pick it from, because it remembers that I've done a shoot here before. So I've just entered in the Prince's Pier. We've chosen the destination already. Okay, um, now I'm organizing by date. Okay. Um, and we're also choosing a date format. I find this is the most useful. The ones above all will nest um, uh, files uh, within folders within folders. So this is a fairly simple one because I don't need a, a, an overcomplicated folder structure uh, for this particular catalog here. Okay, so um, we're, this is the, the, the destination we've already chosen from the top up here. So we're pretty much uh, ready to go. And uh, let's, uh, let's uh, hit the import button and uh, let it cycle through its process. 
okay so this will uh, take a uh, few minutes okay so um, we're shifting uh, um, 142 megapixel files uh, from the card copying them and also backing them up so this is going to take um, a couple of minutes so I it's um, 444 so I'll probably join you in just uh, two minutes time after it's uh, ingested uh, these hundred um, Sony files okay it's um, it's about a minute and a half later or two minutes just turning two minutes later and the files have been uh, copied and backed up and now um, uh, Adobe Lightroom is building the standard previews that's the 1920 uh, by 1200 previews for uh, this 23 inch monitor that I'm using uh, just remember if we're um, looking to uh, set the optimum preview size for the monitor that we're using we can come up to the catalog settings let's just uh, bring up the catalog settings so I can show you there here's the catalog setting standard preview size is we probably want to switch that over to auto okay um, that will create a preview size that will um, fill this uh, monitor there okay so let's uh, just choose that one and uh, as, as it's building we can already see the uh, the thumbnails so what I'm going to do is as it's building the standard previews because anything that I try and edit now will just be a little bit slow because of this background processing obviously if you've got an, a super fast computer quad core processors i7 and loads of RAM then maybe you'll be able to get a, a, a buy with some editing uh, while it's building the standard previews okay I'm only working with a dual core processor and 8 gigabytes of RAM on this MacBook Air so I'll just set up a, a collection this is where my favorite images uh, from this shoot will be going so I'll just click on the uh, the plus button there and choose uh, create collection I'll call it my uh, portrait collection okay I haven't got any uh, photographs selected uh, so I'll just deselect that but what I am going to do is I'm going to set this up as my target collection uh, this will be a faster way of directing images to this collection a collection uh, basically will allow me to uh, group the best images and um, from different shoots uh, um, uh, over a period of time as well and uh, then we can export that collection uh, as um, uh, some uh, rasterized or rendered images um, so let's just hit the uh, create here okay as you can see it's got this little plus icon uh, and that is telling me it is the um, it is the uh, target collection here now the way we can get an image into a target collection with a minimum amount of fuss it's just uh, we're coming down oh this, this image is uh, attracting my attention straight away the eyes are really alive in this one even from the pr the thumbnail I hope those eyes are sharp when I zoom in um, but I, if I wanted to bounce it into the collection now I'll just press the uh, the B key and as you can see that will go straight in uh, to that collection and there it is sitting in that collection so let's come back uh, to um, the um, the import folder this has got the hundred files the standard previews is just finished now so I, I can start pressing the E key and go straight into uh, that full-size preview now okay we can now let's just uh, go back to uh, the grid view and we'll just uh, cycle through these images uh, I'll just uh, click on this one and we'll just quickly go through um, I'm not going to do any uh, editing um, until I've just uh, highlighted which are the best files so I'm just going to press B every time I see one that I like I quite like that one so I'll just press B and uh, keep on coming and uh, looking for the eyes let's press B and a nice smile and uh, keep a nice tilt of the head back B okay and moving forward and again B I don't quite like that one and that one and we won't go too far forward because I'll just move on to the next stage okay so let's just uh, go through to that um, portrait collection now and then press the G key now occasionally I've noticed with Lightroom it gets a little bit confused it's uh, still referring to the um, uh, the import folder so just clicking away and clicking back on uh, should uh, set that up so we can just see uh, the files in that um, collection okay now let's just uh, go in and, and check uh, the um, the sharpness for the eyes now we haven't built one one previews so if you do want to build them all um, at the same time then what you can do is just go back to the grid view um, select all of them shift click 
and then come up to uh, library and previews and then uh, build one one previews now obviously if you're doing this with a lot of images you're probably going to want to take um, a short break uh, round about now um, these are especially uh, 42 megapixel files so this is going to take uh, a few minutes uh, to build these previews what the one one previews would allow us to do is zoom in to actual pixels and just check uh, the critical sharpness of these files okay so again I'm probably going to just uh, zip forward in the movie here uh, it's 4.51 uh, I suspect I'll be joining you in just a, a couple of minutes time okay it's uh, 4.52 and those uh, 1 1 previews have been built so um, now I could just um, uh, go in and uh, check uh, the focus of those eyes and uh, as you can see uh, we can determine uh, whether they're pin sharp or not. Ever such a slight amount of um, uh, movement blur there, so uh, that's not ideal. So let's just zoom back out on that one. It's quite a nice image, but uh, I want those critical sharpness of the eyes. So let's just uh, zoom in again on that. That's uh, much sharper now. We're getting those uh, single eyelashes there and uh, that's really quite sharp so I'm happy uh, to give that a one star rating okay let's just uh, moving forward and checking the eyes again uh, and again that's uh, sharp so we'll give that a one star rating I can just press the forward arrow key and uh, that will come through to the next image and then um, just drag that down into place and uh, that's also sharp so I just press one again now I'm using uh, IAF on this Sony camera and uh, it's actually quite accurate even though we're shooting at a uh, maximum aperture here it is following uh, the eye around now the a7r2 uh, has a continuous AF and it seems to be doing a very good job here so I'll just give that a, a one star rating moving forward and uh, another one star rating and moving forward and uh, I think that's the end of the images so let's just uh, zoom out and go back into grid view so there's just one image that um, uh, I'm just gonna lose that one although I like it, it I just want something that's critically sharp here so I'm just gonna press the delete key it hasn't deleted the image it's still in the folder but I've just removed it from that collection okay we can just come in and do some basic edits now in order to do the basic edits I can just press the D key uh, to go into the develop module now uh, we've got the information up here which is getting in the way a little bit so I'll just hide that by pressing the I key and I'll just click on the uh, the crop tool uh, one of the first things I would probably do is that crop tool and I'm just going to change the um, the aspect ratio uh, from the 3-2 uh, or 2-3 aspect ratio into a 16-10 uh, this is the same aspect ratio of a computer monitor just going to pull that in slightly so we've got that line running uh, the uh, overlay of the th rule of thirds running through that eye there okay if you want to change the overlay just press the O key um, and this gives you um, a variety of uh, overlays including that rule of thirds there I'm happy with that rule of thirds if the image is slightly crooked we just come out, out to one of the corner handles there and we can uh, rotate that image okay um, ever so slightly there and um, maybe just back I want, to, I want both eyes running through that line okay so I'm happy with that one so we'll just click on the, uh, the crop um, uh, icon there and we have that one cropped um, the images all look already looking very good but if you wanted to fine-tune anything here you could maybe um, set uh, the white balance that's uh, certainly a consideration just go a little bit warmer than neutral here uh, maybe at 4800 okay um, exposure if you have if you missed the exposure slightly this is your opportunity to either make it brighter or a little bit darker um, I'm happy with the uh, the um, exposure in camera so if you just double click that will center that one um, also shadows and highlights if your highlights are a little bit too bright or dark we could control that now just bringing the highlights down just to pull a little bit more detail into the bright tones there um, we've got some darker tones there we could open up just by pushing the shadows up just to put a little bit more information in those dark shadows and if you want to set auto whites and auto blacks just hold down the shift key and double click the whites and that will set a, an automatic white point um, and that's raised it considerably there and double click the blacks 
and this will set the optimum black point for this image and very close uh, to being uh, what the camera decided there. Okay, so that's um, that's the setting. We could uh, change the um, the vibrance uh, if it was just a little bit too colourful or we wanted to pump the saturation a little bit higher, but I'm happy with that one now. So let's just um, go back to the grid view. Uh, we could select all of the images now and then just uh, synchronize. It's in the same location, so we could just hit sync settings and uh, we could sync everything. If we don't want to sync the crop, um, we could just remove that and crop each one individually. And that's probably something I'd recommend doing there. And we'll just synchronize the rest of the setting, which will include the uh, white balance adjustment, the highlights, shadows, and optimum blacks and whites. Okay, so we've set that. You can see the uh, changes flowed through there. And uh, I'm happy uh, now to um, showcase these images. We have them in our collection. Okay, what I want to do though is if I do want to um, uh, disconnect my external drive at this point, I will need to build those smart previews so I can carry on editing these files even if the files are offline, i.e. that external uh, hub is disconnected. So we'll just go up to the um, this little icon just below the histogram here. Um, it says it's got f uh, five originals without smart previews. If I click it, uh, it gives me the option to build some smart previews for these images. So I'm building those smart previews. That will probably take a minute or so. And uh, if I wanted to um, um, show this uh, catalog on somebody else's computer, uh, what I could do then is I could just export uh, this collection uh, as a catalog and, uh, and put that catalog on a thumb drive. Uh, we're only taking those images out of this collection that we actually want to showcase. Okay, so let's just uh, right click on that and choose export this collection as a catalog. Now we'll save it as my um, Tegan um, uh, shoot, okay, and uh, I'll save it to my desktop. Now I'm not going to export the negative files. These are very large uh, 42 megapixel um, negative files here. Those are the raw files. So I'm just going to uncheck that, but I am going to include those smart previews. Uh, and any available previews, those are the full uh, screen previews okay, that I've already built for these images. So I'm going to export this catalog onto my desktop now. And again, that's not going to take too long because we're not copying those master files. We're just collecting those previews there. Okay, let's uh, close this catalog. Um, so we'll just cl uh, click on the red button there to close it. And uh, let's go to my Tegan Shoot catalog here. And uh, you'll see there's no images inside of this folder, but we do have uh, those smart previews. And those smart previews will allow us to open um, this catalog and uh, take a look at those images, um, we, even without those raw files and even with that hub disconnected. Okay, let's, let's just notice it's a new collection, so I'll just hit that continue. Okay, so we've only got uh, the smart previews. It's actually still tracking the original. So what I might do um, now is just disconnect that hub. Okay, I've got the uh, two hubs there. I'll just eject those so it's no longer connected. And um, now um, Lightroom will realize it's o it can only see the smart previews, but it does allow me to come into this image. And uh, I can still go into the develop module uh, with this image. And, uh, and then we can carry on editing. So if we need to do any more work, like if I wanted to add a vignette to this image, I could go and add a vignette. And you can see I can carry on working with this image even though it's offline. And uh, I'll just make it a little bit brighter. Okay. And uh, now we have that image. And so there's the workflow. Okay, so um, from import um, through to working um, with a catalog with the, the master images offline. And that's keeping my MacBook Air, courtesy of the Lexar Professional Workflow Hub, um, nice and uh, lean and mean. It's not overloaded with um, uh, hundreds and thousands of uh, big raw files. Uh, those can be um, uh, sitting on my, um, uh, my hub. Now, the advantage of this Lexar Hub is I can take one of those um, 512 SD, SD um, slots um, or hubs, um, sorry, the, the, the SSD drive that fits into the hub, I can actually pop that out. It's just a click in, click out type thing. And I can take that on the road as my external drive if I don't want to take the whole hub with me. Okay, so um, that finishes the, um, the workflow.